Structural interpretation is about making choices. And we can explore this idea by drawing a cross section using this exercise here, which has a well and bedding data collected along an outcrop surface. And we're going to compare two ways of constructing a cross section. And we'll start off by using the busk method, which interprets folds as being a series of continuously arcuate surfaces. So here's our basic cross section with the well on the left within which we find unit A. And we're going to construct this towards the right, that's towards the southeast, into the uninterpreted part of the cross section using those bedding readings which lie along the surface. So for the bus construction, I've started by constructing a series of lines on here that are perpendicular to the bedding traces. The intersections of these lines give points of rotation by which we can construct arcs or segments of arcs that gradually build out the formation A. So let's get going. Here's our first arc segment about that rotation point. We can now move to another rotation point up here and draw the next arc segment, the next rotation point here, and the next arc segment. So let's keep going. Here's our next center for rotation. There's the arc segment. The next bed trace that we're going to use is parallel to the one we've just used already. So we just move that point down to here, continuing our bed trace as a straight pair of lines. And now we can construct the next arc rotation point here and put an arc segment in, another rotation point here, and our arc segment to there, and so forth. The next rotation point here, another arc segment, another rotation point here where our lines that are perpendicular to the bedding traces intersect one another, and the arc segment that we construct from that. Another center of rotation here, and the arc segment. Another one here, big arc segment there. And finally, our last center of rotation and the arc segment there. So we've completed our trace of our layer A across the cross section. Let's just color it in so it's a bit more clearly seen. So that's our first attempt at this cross-section, built using Busk's method. Well, let's have another go now, with another clean version, and we'll have a go at applying the kink band method. So here's our basic section again, and we can construct on a series of lines again that are perpendicular to the bedding orientations that are measured across the profile. And it's the biceps of these lines that will define kinky fold axial traces, like this one here. These axial traces act as mirror planes by which the bedding will deflect from limb to limb. And the limbs themselves will be dip panels, the orientation of which will be defined by the bedding readings, like this. So we've got two axial traces drawn in that contain the two limbs with one hinge in between. Let's keep going. Here's another bisector. So we can take the bedding trace that's between the two axial traces and draw it on. It's that sub-horizontal one there that's at the surface. And again, so forth. Here's another bisector, the axial trace. Here is the dip panel that defines the fold limb. Now for the next segment, we've got two bedding traces coming up that are parallel to one another. We can put the first bit on like this all the way through to here. And now we find the bisector where the two bed dips change here. And we can project the limb that we're already on down to that fold axial trace. Let's put in another bisector, which is another axial trace, and take the bed all the way up to that here, defining another dip panel. Pop on another bisector, another axial trace, in other words, a little segment here the dip panel, another bisector, 
another dip panel all the way through to here. Only a few to go now. Like this and off to the edge of the section. So there's our completed bed for the kink band construction. It's all pretty kinky, isn't it? Let's just colour it in. And there we have our complete bed geometry for this second construction technique. Well, let's just compare our two cross sections. The one we've just done with the kink band approach with the version we did earlier using the busk method. Let's look past the form of the folds and we can see that the overall uh, cross sections are rather similar. They've both got um, the same number of folds and indeed the fold spacing is rather similar. In other words, the wavelength of the folds is essentially the same. But there's some important differences between the cross sections that may be significant. The amplitude of the folds is rather different. In the bus construction, there are the low amplitude folds, certainly compared to the kink construction below. And there are other differences as well. Let's try and quantify the amount of deformation recorded by these cross sections. So what we're going to do is measure the longitudinal strain, which charts the change in length of layers involved in deformation. So a quick reminder, Longitudinal strain is the change in length of lines. In order to apply this technique to cross sections, we can measure the present day cross section width, which is L1, and compare that with the sinuous unraveled length of the layers, which record the original length of the layering involved in the deformation. And we can plug those terms into a simple equation for longitudinal strain or elongation E, which is the final length minus the original length divided by the original length of the layer. So that's longitudinal strain. Let's see how it plays out for the two cross sections. And we can start off by looking at the bus construction at the top. The original length of this layer is its sinuous length measured all the way around those curves. And the present day length is the straight line distance along the cross section. And I've used the measurement from the well to the end of the cross section here, which is the line constructed perpendicular to that last bedding reading over there on the southeast side of the section. So those are our two measurements. L0, the original length, that sinuous length in red, is 8.6 kilometers. The final length, the straight line distance, L1, is 7.5 kilometers. So we can plug these numbers into the expression, 7.5 minus 8.6 divided by 8.6, and that comes out as minus 0.12. So the elongation is minus 0.12. It's a negative number because the deformation is contractional. So the bed length is shorter at the end of the deformation than it was before. It's a negative elongation, minus 0.12. We'll keep that number in mind and we'll now move on to look at the other cross section which was constructed using the kink band method. Well, it's the same final length and we'll make the same measurement from the well to that line over on the southeast side which is constructed perpendicular to the final bedding reading. And that, as we've seen, has got a length of 7.5 kilometers. Now we just have to measure all the way around those kinky folds along our green bed here to get us the original length of the layer, which comes out at 9.5 kilometers. So again, we plug these numbers into our expression, 7.5 minus 9.5 divided by 9.5, the original length of the layer. And that comes out with a figure of minus 0.21 elongation E minus 0.21. So the kink construction E is minus 0.21 and for the bus construction E is minus 0.12. So 
Our different cross-sections imply different amounts of orogenic contraction and they make different forecasts of subsurface structure as well. So the choices we make when drawing cross-sections, in this case whether we think fold hinges are rounded or very angular, impacts not only on the cross-section but also on the deductions we draw from it. So it's worth being aware of the implications of choices we make when making structural interpretations.